Okay, it is installed and running on my device. For <laughs> full testing purposes, I think we'll go and use a new account. So from here, we'll select Sahil. Okay, so Sahil has, hasn't messaged anyone. Um, from my account, I'm gonna use uh, Devon, so on my phone. Uh, Devon has messaged uh, one person, he's messaged me. Um, okay, and then in contacts, well, of course, let's say here, we're gonna message Devon. And uh, let's say, how's it going? So now if we send a message, immediately it, it comes through. How's it going? We got 100. And now uh, you can also see that uh, if we tap this, it says that Sahil is online, Devon is online, we got a message. And if we go back, uh, the message is no longer read. And now if we send Devon a reply, we should see typing. It's going well. And yeah, fantastic. It's uh, typing as well. Welcome everyone to part two of our video series where we are creating a chat application from scratch. And um, I should clarify that this does not purely just need to be a chat app. This can be chat functionality that you incorporate into an existing application as well. If you did not watch the previous video, then that is not an issue. As in the previous video, we just built the UI. So if you are familiar with Flutter, then you should easily follow along. And in this video, we will be focusing on incorporating the Stream API into our application. So by the end of this video, we'll actually be able to send real-time messages to different users on our application. And um, along with that, we'll also be able to see typing indicators. So when someone is typing a message, we'll be able to see unread counts and then mark messages as read. We can search for users or at least we won't be doing search just yet, but we will list uh, all of the users on the application. Just gonna be the minimum requirements to basically be classified as a chat application. Of course, there's a lot more features that we can eventually add. And if you are interested, then you can take a look at our UI packages as well. So these stream UI packages that um, provide full-fledged chat functionality out of the box. Or you can take a look at some of our example applications. So there are a number of different applications that we have built that are fully featured chat apps that go into deeper detail uh, what we will actually cover in this video. With that all said, let's actually jump in and get started with our application. If you want to follow along with the code, then you can go to the repository and uh, there will be instructions for the different tutorials and uh, the different branches that are associated with those uh, tutorials. So uh, for this, you will need to do tutorial 002, stream chat Flutter core. So this will be the base. And then eventually by the end of this video, there should be one marked as complete. So if you want all of the code for this tutorial, then it will be at this particular branch. And if you ever want the latest code for this repository, just go to the main branch. So we will technically be working from the stream chat Flutter core branch for this video. And then I will show you the code to build it up to the final version. But as the final version is not there yet, I'll be on the complete branch as this is the branch that I'll be pushing to GitHub. Okay, so let's run our application. And as you can see, this is what we have at the moment. All of this is just fake data uh, well, generated on the fly, randomized. So, what we're gonna do is, first off, we will need to incorporate a couple of packages. And uh, the first package that we will need is the StreamChat Flutter core um, package. And uh, this will allow you to implement some of the core functionalities of the Stream API. There is a lower level package called uh, StreamChat, but this one gives you a lot of nice features out of the box and also gives you a lot of control when it comes to building exactly what you want from a UI perspective. So this is the package that we will be using. So in our pubsec file, we will just add this as a dependency. So I'm just gonna search for that. Okay, so it's added as a dependency. And one additional package that we will add is the logger package. And uh, the logger package is just to do nice log messages, which we will do later on. 
Next, we will need to create a new application on our stream dashboard. So if you haven't yet, then you can go and create a free account on stream to try out the API. There's also maker accounts that give unlimited access to uh, startups and small businesses. So if you are interested in that, that is something you can explore as well. I already have an account. So this is what the dashboard looks like. And um, I've already created a demo. So I called it Chatter Demo. And as you can see, here's all of my configuration for this. But if you are new, um, it's quite simple. All you do is create an app, you give it a name, and then you select the server location for your chat server and your feed server. We are just gonna be using a chat um, for this video series, at least for now. And uh, then you have the option to clone an existing app. And then um, as we are still in the de uh, development, select that the environment is development. If you ever plan to release a production version of this app, then you can create a new one and just set it to production. Develop is perfect for what we are doing now. And it will also allow us to disable certain authentication checks that help with um, uh, development or to speed things along. So I'm not gonna create that app because I've already done it. But after you've created it, you should see it in your dashboard over here. And uh, as you can see, we have a key and we have a secret. And we are actually not gonna be using the secret in this video because as I mentioned, we are gonna disable authentication for our users. Another way to think of the key and the secret is that the key is your username and the secret is your password. So keep the secret a uh, secret. <laughs> and the key you can freely share. And we will be using this in our uh, config for the chat application. If you were to create your own backend, then you would use the secret to, for example, create user accounts and um, create channels and do various different um, functionalities and uh, more sensitive operations. But we are not gonna be creating a backend. We will just have our Flutter front-end application. So we will actually be manually creating users. And uh, yeah, I'll get into that in a bit. So what we need to do is we need to take this key, copy it as we will need it in our application. And here I'm just gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it app.dart. And let's call this stream key and save it as we will need a reference to this later. And while we're busy, I'm actually also gonna create an instance of Logger. So Logger is the package we uh, created or the package that we imported. And as you can see, Logger is actually uh, exposed through uh, Stream Chat Flutter core package as well because it's used internally. Uh, however, as we added it as a dependency, we can just import the Logger package. And then back in main.dart, we would need to initialize the client. So I'm gonna convert this to block body and create the stream client. And uh, as you can see, this requires the uh, stream API key that we just uh, got. So I'm just gonna pass that in. So the stream key is this one over here. And in our my app, we are just gonna pass in the clients. And then Great, we can pass this in. And uh, sorry, this is not a name client, it's called stream chat client. And then we just pass it in as a constructor argument and it's gonna no longer be constant. Okay, so now uh, we have our client and we can actually start doing some operations um, on the stream API. How these stream packages work on Flutter is it uses inherited widgets to pass information down. So at the root of our uh, tree, our widget tree, we would need to create certain stream widgets that expose the necessary information that we need. And these widgets are also the uh, business logic components that manage every, everything related to stream chat for us. So it just simplifies a lot of things instead of us having to do it manually. The best way to do this would be uh, by creating a builder in the material app. So in the builder, you get a context and you get a child. And if we were to return the child, then um, what is the issue here? Oh, uh, this child is optionally null. So we just, we know that the child won't be null because we are passing in um, a child attribute in the home uh, attribute over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this 
in a widget called stream chat core. And the stream chat core requires you to give the client. So we're just gonna give the client. And yeah, as I mentioned, this is just a way that we can easily access the client lower down in the widget tree. And it also does some initialization and uh, stuff like that for us. So as an example, in the home screen, if we wanted to access the client now, then we can do a stream chat flutter core, or not just stream chat core, sorry. And we can say, we'll import this. We can say dot of dot context, and then we can access the client like that. And then on the client, you can do various different things. Like as you can see, connect to user and ban users, delete files, create images, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, this is using an edited widgets just to easily access um, our stream chat components lower down in the widget tree. So let's remove this for now because that was just an example. And next, what we want to do is we want um, to create some users for our application. But as I mentioned, uh, we don't have a backend. We're just gonna be using the Flutter front end. We can either create um, tokens and hard code the authentication tokens in our application, or we can disable authentication for our app. So uh, let's explore that um, by actually just uh, creating the necessary files to select a user in our application. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just create a new model for our users. So I'm just gonna copy this in and uh, the file will, is gonna be called demo users. And as you can see, uh, this is an immutable class. Let's just create more space in our file. There's an immutable class called demo user and we have an ID, a name, and an image. All of them are string. And we're just hard coding some values. So we're doing this because we don't have a backend, as I mentioned. And uh, we're just creating some constant users. So as you can see, here we have the developers working at stream and each of them, or the Flutter developers, and each of them have their ID, which is just their name and their full name, and then a picture that is their Twitter profile picture. So this is gonna be used in our application to show a user that you can select to authenticate as. So now that we have our users, what we want to do is create a screen where we can select one of those users. So in these screens, I am gonna create or pass in the select user screen. So I'm just gonna copy this in from the final code, put it in there and then I'll tell you exactly what we're doing. So what we're doing in the select user screen is we are defining a root. So this is a material page root where we can um, just easily access the select user screen and do a material navigation to it. This we will need later on in the application. And then we have um, a state of loading and initially the loading state is set to false. And then we have this method called on user selected, which we will get to in a moment. Let's actually show this page first and it will be a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So back in main.dart, we are gonna, um, instead of saying the home screen, we are gonna give the select user screen. And this can be constant. And let's do a hot restart. Okay, so now we have our uh, users that we can select from. And as you can see, if it's loading, we return a circular prog progress indicator. If it's not loading, then we are returning um, the text where it says select a user at the top here. And then we have an expanded list view builder. And this list view builder gets the users that we have. So this list of users. And then it just builds a select user button. So the select user button is the individual button for each of these users. So up until this stage, we actually haven't done anything to do with the stream API. We just have our list of users that we can select. And um, the select user button gets an on pressed event. And this on pressed is a function that just passes back the demo user that we give to the select user button. So when you press on press, uh, it just passes back the uh, user details that we have. And as you can see, we have a handler for this. So this void on user selected, it gets the user and then it sets the loading state to true. So then we'll see a loading indicator saying that we are connecting a user. And as you can see, um, this should actually be a future void. 
and we have an async method and then we are awaiting the connection of the user. So as we saw before, we can access the client using inherited widgets. So stream chat of context clients, we get the client and then we call connect user on that. And this uh, requires us to actually pass in a user object. And this user is uh, from the stream um, package and this requires an ID. Actually, that's all it requires is the ID. And we are also passing in the extra data because we would like a way to actually set the username and a way to set the user's image. The extra data is literally any data that you can set that you want to also be stored on the stream API that is associated to a user. As an example, you can make this anything. You can say that this is my name as an example, and that would be stored like that. If you are setting a name and an image, it is recommended to use these keys. As an example, let's say we create a user over here. So final test, pass that in. You can say test.name, which gets the name of the user. However, please note that this name is literally just the extra data of the user. So um, doing test.name is the same as saying test.extra data and getting the name like this. But yeah, let's continue. What we're doing is we're connecting a user with this ID and we are passing in the name and the image. And then important to connect a user, you need to pass in a token. So normally a token would look uh, just a long string, but as this is only a front end application, uh, we don't have a back end. We can either hard code these tokens or we can disable authentication and use developer tokens, which is the easiest thing to do for our current scenario. Maybe in a future video, we can incorporate an actual serverless application and generate uh, secure tokens on Firebase, for example, or uh, on any backend. There are also a number of different SDKs that you can use to generate tokens. So what we're gonna do is in our uh, chatter demo, Let's just click this one and then you can go to chat and click overview. Then at the bottom over here, there's an authentication section. And as you can see, I have a check to say disable of checks. So if you want to use developer tokens, just click or highlight this and or toggle this and disable the authentication. So now we can use client.dev token. We just pass in the ID of the user and then we get the raw value. So the string value. And uh, that is that. After it connects the user, then we do a push replacement route to the home screen. And then we also have a try catch. And if there is an exception, so for example, if it could not authenticate a user, then we just log an error. As you can see, if, uh, if there is an error, then we set the loading state back to false. So let's just restart the application, make sure it works. And then I'm gonna select my user, so Gordon Hayes. Okay, fantastic. So this takes us to our current homepage that we had. And uh, that is what we expected to happen. If we go back to our stream dashboard, one thing we can take notes of as well, if you go to the Explorer, you can see that we have a list of channels and a list of users. And as you can see, we currently have uh, users for Devon, Sasha, Salvatore, Gordon, and this Gordon stream is the admin user of the account that was created when the uh, actual dashboard or the app was created. There's multiple ways you can create users. You can create one directly in the database or you can use one of the SDKs. So if we were to refresh the application, as you can see, we currently don't have any accounts for Ruben or, or Nash. So as you can see, they're not listed here. And take note that when you do connect user, if the user does not exist, then it will actually create the user. So as an example, if we click Nash over here, load it, and then go back to this page, we should see Nash as a new user. And there we go, here is Nash. And as you can see, it's oh, his account has been created. We still need an account for Ruben. So as I said, these accounts will automatically be created if you just connect the user, or you can actually go here and create a user. So you, we can type in his name and his ID will just be his first name and the role will just be a user. So we can create this. Okay, fantastic. And now if we refresh, 
you can see that here we have Ruben, but it, uh, he doesn't have anything set aside from his name. He doesn't have uh, his image set, for example. So if we are to select him now, then it should have been created that data. And as you can see, now we have his name and his image set. Well, his name was set before. So yeah, that's one way that you can just quickly demo stuff and use the uh, front end packages to your advantage. But ideally, you shouldn't be setting this on every single authentication request. This should be handled with your backend and using the uh, your stream secret key to set user account details automatically on your backend. Okay, now what we want to do is we want a way to actually sign the user out so that we can go back to the select user screen and um, select a different user just for demo purposes. So we're gonna go back to screens and we're gonna create a new one. And one thing I forgot to do is to export the select user screen over here. So this is just a convenient way to uh, have one import instead of having three different imports. Okay, so the new screen that we will add is called the profile screen. And then we will also just import that or export that. Okay, and we have an error. And as you can see, context.current user doesn't exist. And uh, that is because it will be convenient for us to create some extension methods to help us uh, instead of typing out everything. So in our app, we are gonna create a new extension called stream chat context. And this is gonna be an extension on the build context and import material. And then we need to import the stream chat flutter core package. And as you can see, we have an error now because logger is now imported from both packages. If we wanted to, we can just remove this and use the logger over here. Or I'm just gonna say, import this as log and then log.logger. Now the two contexts that, or the two extensions that we have is an extension to get the current user image and the current user. And this is just a shortcut to, as you can see, we do stream chat off core, um, get the current user. And on this one, we are doing the exact same thing and just getting the, uh, the image. So here it should actually work to uh, just say current user dot image like this. Okay, and then back in the profile screen. Okay, before we continue talking about the profile screen, as you can see, we are currently getting an error when we are loading the avatar image over here. So this uh, avatar that we're currently just doing as a random image, now we need to pass in an optional URL. So at the moment, if we take a look at uh, these, the URL is required. So we would actually not want this to be required. And we're gonna make some changes over here. So I'm just gonna copy in the changes and then we can see what the differences are. So as you can see the differences that we have now, if we go to uh, our diffs like this, you can see that the URL is now an optional string value and we have a void callback uh, on tap. And then we wrap our avatar in a gesture detector that gets that uh, on tap callback. And then if the URL is not null, then we return a circle avatar with the cache network image with the URL. If the if it is null, then we return a circle avatar with a question mark. So if there's no user image, then we just return a question mark. And yeah, that's the changes that we made. And if we go back to the profile screen, and now it should work that for this avatar, we should actually show the currently authenticated user's image. So let's just do a hot restart and see what happens. So I'm gonna select uh, Gordon Hayes. And okay, this should have worked. It should show the image. Oh, excuse me, I am, uh, I'm wrong. This image still hasn't been updated to the latest one. This is the profile screen. <laughs> uh, I got a little confused. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about this profile screen more in a moment. Let's go back a little bit and go to the home screen. So um, let me just search for home screen. And now in the avatar, so in the scaffold over here, we are, as you can see, we, we have our avatar over here. We want to update this to actually be the current authenticated user. So instead of passing in this helper, we are gonna pass in context dot uh, the current user image. So one unfortunate thing about extensions, so here this extension that we made is that they don't automatically import, at least they don't on Visual Studio Code. But 
we are just going to import it manually and here we should now get the current user image okay so now if we save this as you can see it updates it to show my profile picture now at the top there and what we want to do is we want when we uh, tap on this image we want to go to that screen so as you can remember we added an on tap handler so we're going to say navigator dot of context dot push and then the profile screen and now if we tap this it goes to that profile screen over there and as you can see we have a sign out button and it just shows the picture and the name we'll explore this in a moment one a nice little thing that we can add is we can add a little euro animation to this so euro and uh, we'll call this tag the euro profile picture and now if you tap it you can see it does like a little animation keeps track of the image okay so in the profile screen the screen over here you can see scaffold app bar we have the hero with the same tag and that's how we're doing that animation then uh, some padding if there's no name um, with the image and yeah getting the name if there is no username then we just print no name we have a divider and then the sign out button and the sign out button is a stateful widget and uh, there's a loading state as you can see and if it's loading indicator if it's not loading then show the sign out button and on pressed for the sign out button we call this function which is an asynchronous feature we set the state to loading and then we do a try catch and we uh, call await stream chat core of client and then we call disconnect okay and uh, or disconnect user and then if the user is disconnected we do a navigator push to the select user screen so back all the way back to uh, our initial screen so yeah this should work if we press sign out then we go back to the user screen and now we can select a different user so now we're selecting salvatore and then we can sign out again and yeah one thing to note is that in the select user screen where we do the navigator so where we do this we're doing a push replacement so we're removing this uh, screen from our roots so uh, not just a push we're replacing this with an entirely new page we could have done something else like we could have not done a push replacement or we could have used navigator 2.0 to do more complex navigation but uh, for this purposes and this example this is more than sufficient okay so that is that for authentication and well semi-authentication connecting a user and disconnecting a user so now what we want to do is have a way to actually show all of the um, messages that are on the screen basically get a list of users um, as an example so if we now go to the messages screen uh messages page sorry so open pages and messages page at the moment all of this is just uh, fake information and fake data we want to now get real data from the stream api what we have at the moment we are just going to remove this so instead of this uh, sliver list with this uh, del delicate builder over here we are going to remove this because we need to do a couple of changes so let's remove this delegate and I'm gonna copy this out just for now. Okay, and then instead we're gonna return a channel list core. So the channel list core is also um, a widget that comes from the uh, stream package. And um, as you can see, well, we need to import it first. This will give a list of all of the channels that are in a, a particular application. So a channel is essentially the uh, place that you store information or messages uh, with relation to like chats with a set number of users or for example, creating a, a group channel where multiple users can be part of that uh, group channel and send messages, etc. But we're just gonna be creating individual channels. So, uh, basically a one-to-one -one messaging channel. So this requires a couple of things. It requires a list builder, empty builder, error builder. So let's start with the empty builder. And this gets a context. 
And for the empty builder, what we're gonna do is return the following. So this will just return a text that says, so empty, go and uh, message someone. Okay, and then uh, next up, we want the error builder, which gets a context and the error, I believe. And uh, for the error builder, we are actually gonna create a new widget. So I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call this display error message, just because uh, we're actually gonna be doing this quite a lot. So it's, it, it's gonna come up uh, more than once. And this is what we will do, is just pass in an object error and then, oh no, something went wrong, please check your config and it prints the error. Okay, and then back in messages page, we will give the display error message and pass in the error. And then we are also gonna create a loading builder which will get a context and um, just pass in the information. This will return a centered size box with a circular progress indicator. And then uh, finally, we want the list builder. So this is going to be the context and it's gonna give us a list of channels. So I'm just gonna say channels. And this is now uh, the information that we need to actually display uh, the stuff that we want to display. And for this, uh, I'm just gonna copy this back in, paste it here. And now we want to uh, display these channels. Okay, and then in the server child builder delegate, we would get the context. Let's double check. Uh, we get a context and we get an index. Okay, pass that in. And uh, for now, let's just return text, hello, in the item count, child count, sorry. So it's child count, so how many items we have in the list view. We're gonna say channels.length. Okay, so now we have an issue. Um, it says that the stream chat core failed. The assertion that the stream chat slate is null. You must have a channels block widget as an ancestor. And uh, this is what I mentioned with regards to how stream works with inherited widgets to pass information on, uh, down the widget tree. So that means somewhere above this widget, we need to uh, create a channels block. So as an example, what we could do is literally just create a channels block here and it would work, okay? But um, depending on where you're gonna be using this block or depending on where else you want to use um, this functionality to retrieve the list of users, where you would need the channels block essentially, it might make more sense to just add it at the top of your widget tree, or at least uh, at a location at the widget tree where as many of the necessary widgets that need it can get access to it. So in this builder back in our main.dart file, I'm just gonna add it here instead because we're gonna be using uh, this block throughout the application. So uh, we'll just add the channels block. Great, so now it's up in the widget tree and uh, we can get access to it. And as you can see, we are printing text.hello for the three different channels that have been made for that user. Uh, please note that I'm, I've already done some testing over here, so that's why some of um, these channels already exist. We'll, uh, see an account that ha doesn't have any channels in a moment. Okay, so what we want to do is we are gonna return uh, the message tile widget, which is what we had before. And um, in the past, we created message data, uh, which was just a mock uh, model to store some uh, information that we needed for um, the display purposes but we no longer need that. So instead of passing in the message data, we are now gonna pass in a channel. And this is a stream channel, which we will call channel. And let's comment this error out for now. And for this widget, we will need the uh, profile picture for the channel. So in the helpers file, we're gonna create a helper method just to um, make it easier to get the uh, image from a channel. 
and we will call that get channel image and then just import the package and then back in this um, instead of saying message data and URL uh, what we want to do now is say helpers dot get channel image we pass in the channel and we can say context dot current user and then to get the current user we would need to import that extension which comes from our app file and uh, we would need to say that this is not null so at this stage we can fairly confidently uh, say that it's not going to be null okay so let's explore what this method does what this does is it checks to see if the channel image is not equal uh, to null and if it isn't then uh, we return the channel image <laughs> just that and if it isn't null so if there is no image then we want to actually uh, see what the other members of the channel is so we say channel.state.members so we get all of the members on the particular channel and then we say where the element so the, where the member user id is not equal to the current id and then we to list this so all of the members accept us in the list so except the current authenticated user and then if the other members that length equals one then we return the other members that first that user that image. So what, what is happening here is that for a channel, you can set an image on the channel. But if you are doing a one-to-one -one message with a particular user, so for example, if Gordon is messaging Sahil, then the channel may not, not have an image, but because I'm messaging Sahil, I would like to see Sahil's profile picture because he's the only other member in that channel that isn't just me. And uh, yeah, so this will become a little bit more clear once we actually uh, get to see all of the information. So back in messages uh, page, we would now need to do a similar operation for the name. So we are gonna create another helper and uh, this helper we will call the get channel name. And this does exactly the same as the get channel image. The only difference is now we're returning the name if the channel has a name and if the channel doesn't have a name then we return the first user if there's only one user's that user's name okay so back here we will just say helpers dot get channel name and we pass in the channel and the current user okay and then just to show that that's working let's um for now, I'm just gonna hard code this. And then in message tile for this widget, we just need to pass in the uh, channel. And we can get that from the channels that we get from our builder. So from the channel is core, and then just pass in the correct index and return that value. Okay, and then perfect. So now, as you can see, uh, we have these three channels over here. So these are our users that I have messages uh, or that I have messaged in the past. If we were to sign out, let's select uh, Nash, which um, was the new account that we created. And uh, let's just do a hot restart. Okay, select Nash. Okay, we have an error. Let's see what is the issue. Uh, implementation found from method. Okay, so if this does happen, uh, just push through. Okay, so this is something that I forgot to do. As you can see, we are getting an error that says, um, please check your config. Um, three channels match your query, but cannot be returned because you don't have access to them. Did you forget to include members.in? So if we take a look at our messages page, in the channel list core, we can give a number of different things. And one of them is a filter. So I'm just gonna copy this, this in. So this filter goes and says filter and, and then you can give like a list of different kinds of filters. And we filter for the type of channel. So in a stream, you get different kinds of channels. And if you go to the dashboard and uh, you go to overview, you can see that here we have channel types. We have commerce, gaming, live stream, messaging team. We are interested in the messaging channel because that's what we're creating. You can also add channels if you wanted to, but these are defaults and like each of them have like different 
uh, properties. As you can see that we have three channels over here already created on my mock database or on my app. What we want to do is just get the type messaging. We don't care about gaming and commerce, etc. And then we filter for the members where the list of members is um, not equal, no, is equal to the uh, current user's ID. So you only want to see the channels that you are currently a member of. You don't want to see all of the channels, for example. So that is why Nash is getting this issue because he is not part of that channel. Um, so if we add this filter, then it should work. And it, fantastic, now we get our um, empty builder. So empty, go and message someone. So now if Nash were to go and message someone, then um, that channel would be created between him and whoever else. One other thing that I forgot to do is you can create a channel list uh, controller. So I'm just gonna create a stateful widget and create a channel list controller and initialize that. And then pass it in. And as you can see, a channel list controller allows reloading and pagination. And uh, at this stage, we won't actually be using it, but it is a good idea to uh, initialize your list core with this controller as you well, might probably need it as your data grows. Okay, um, so if we sign out from Nash's profile and go back to uh, Gordon's profile, then what we want to do now is, as you can see, we have uh, the name, we have an image, but now we need to get the latest uh, message that was sent um, along with some additional uh, information. So what we're gonna do is instead of passing in this, we will create a new method called build last message. And then at the bottom, we'll just create that uh, function or that method. And I'm just gonna copy paste it in. So what this does is it is taking a look at the last messages stream on the channel state. And uh, we currently have an issue where it's um, not showing the full text, I'll debug this in a moment. But as you can see, what we're doing is we're using uh, the beta stream builder, which is coming from the stream packages. Same as the stream builder, just some uh, extra stuff, like it does like initial data and does like a loading indicator and stuff like that. But yeah, what we're doing is we are taking a look at the last message stream. And the reason we want to use the stream instead of just using the last message on the channel state is because we want it to be reactive. So every time we get a new message to push to the stream, we want our app to be like, oh, okay, cool. Devon sent us a new message or Sasha sent a new message, uh, refresh and show the latest one. Um, so that that's what I mean by reactive. And we also give initial data for the stream. And the initial data would just be the last message stored in the state. And uh, yeah, with this, you'll see later that as someone sends us a message, it immediately updates and it's reactive. And then we just use this information to just stylize it a little bit and uh, show it. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna debug why it's not showing the full uh, text over here. Okay, um, I figured out the issue and it's just because like this text over here is too long, like the name. So as an example, if we uh, remove this, then you can see, okay, fantastic. Uh, please reply, there we go. So what we want to do now is we want to build the last message at. So I'm just gonna remove this as well. And this time we're gonna call it build last message at. So this will be a little bit of an indicator at the top here to show when the message was sent. And for this one as well, I'm just gonna copy that in. So at the bottom here, we can say build last message at. And now you can see it shows you the last time a message was sent. So at 10 a.m. at Thursday, Thursday, etc. Okay, now the thing to take note of is that for this beta stream builder, here we're now giving the last message at stream and initial data last message. And then when we get the data, we convert it to two local. If we do not do the two local, so as an example, if we were to remove this, you can see that the time changed by like uh, two hours, I think. Oh, actually it didn't change here. Um, 
but yeah you want to do two local because you want to make sure that the daytime is local to what uh, you currently have set for your system preferences in on your phone otherwise it may show uh, local data or the local data to the person that sent it as an example okay and then what we're doing here you can take a look at this in your own time we are just doing some additional logic to basically determine when what message we should show and we're using the jiffy package which we discussed in detail in the previous video. So if you want to take a look at that, or if you want to take a look at the package in your own time, this just shows a nice message uh, indicating when it was sent. And then we have a text with the uh, string date or that we have defined here, uh, or that gets returned by Jiffy. And fantastic, now we actually can uh, see real data. But up until this point, we still don't know how to actually create these channels. And, um, the way that we create channels is um, by first getting all of the contacts that are on uh, the database or on the stream API. And then uh, using that, we can create channels. And we will do that in the contacts screen over here. So if we go to contacts page, I'm gonna replace this and just copy this in and um, just uncomment or comment this one out for now as we will get to it in a bit and import the correct error widget. Okay, fantastic. So now if we go to the contacts screen, you can see that we're getting an error and it says you must have a user's block widget as an ancestor. And that is because in the contacts page, what we're doing now is we're using the user list core uh, Flutter package to list all of the users or not package, sorry, the user list core widget to list all of the users that are on um, our application. And uh, this requires the users block. So again, we can wrap this in the users block and that will work, but it would make more sense to actually have this at the roots of our uh, widget tree. So where we have channels block, I'm just gonna wrap this in the users block as well. And if we go to the contacts page and go to the contacts screen, perfect. Now you can see it lists all of our users. And what's important to note now is that this is not fake data. Like this is actual users that are registered on our stream API. Um, so you can see that this uh, user list core gives us um, the pagination and filter that we saw before. Actually, we didn't look into pagination, but we did look into filter. And we're doing a filter that's not equal to the ID of the current user. So we're checking to see that uh, we get all of the users that are not the current user. And we can do other filters as well. We should probably do a filter to only get the users and not the admins. As you can see, it, it returns the Gordon Stream admin at the moment. But yeah, then empty builder, showing that there, no, there are no users, loading builder and error builder if there's an error. And then in the list builder, we're just doing a list view and um, we are getting the items. Uh, these items are the actual users that we get. So we can actually probably call this better. Let's actually call this users. That makes more sense. Oh, actually uh, I'm wrong. Calling it items does make more sense because the a result that we get is actually a list item. It's not a user. And the reason for that is because it can be two different classes. It can be a header item or it can be a user item. And um, we're not gonna go into detail of what a header item is, but the user item is what we care about is the fact that uh, it's a user object that is returned. And if it is a user object, as you can see, we're doing a map or a win on this. So we're returning when it's header item, size box shrink when user item return a contact tile and uh, the contact tile gets in a user and this user comes from stream and we're using this user to show a list tile with the avatar equal to the user's image and the title uh, the user's name so let's take a look at that again and then we wrap this in an inkwell so if you tap this it calls the create channel method which uh, gets the context and then 
we get uh, the call from stream shut off context. Um, we create a channel variable. We call, we get that by calling client dot channel. So this will um, create, or not yet create a channel. It's just going to create a channel instance. And uh, the type of the channel is messaging. So as I mentioned before, we only care about the messaging channel type. And as you can see, within the extra data, we give the members. And uh, the first member is going to be the currently authenticated user, so current user, and then also the ID of the user that's selected. So as an example, we are logged in with Gordon's profile. If he selects Nash, then now Nash, uh, this would be Gordon, and this one would be Nash. And then this is where the magic happens. We call channel.watch. So this loads the initial channel state and watches for, for changes. And what this is going to do is it's going to create the channel if it doesn't exist. And then it also um, will be then reactive to changes to that messaging channel. So if you get a message, then you can, for example, later on build like notifications and get a notification when there's a message, etc. But yeah, you need to call watch if you want to access that channel. And then finally, the thing that I commented out is we need to navigate to the chat screen. So once all of this is complete, uh, we'll go to the chat screen, which we have created. Uh, the only difference now is we need to pass in the channel as well. So if we go to chat screen, we currently have this route. We are going to change this route to get the channel in instead. So I'm going to replace the current static root method that we have and replace it with the root of channel. And we no longer need to pass in message data. We now need to pass in our channel. Actually, now that I said that, we actually don't need to pass in the channel because um, we will actually be able to get it using um, inherited widgets. So as you can see here, root with channel, we are returning a material page root, getting a builder, and then we're returning a stream channel. And the stream channel will initialize the channel, do a number of different other things for you that you don't need to worry about. And will also allow you to easily access the channel from widgets that are lower down the widget tree. So for example, then later on in the chat screen, we can easily just access the channel using uh, stream chat dot off context. Okay, so that's exactly what we need. But uh, important to note now that we no longer get the message data because that was just all uh, testing stuff that we did. And okay, so now if we go to our contacts page, we can just import the chat screen. And let's do a test. So what we're going to do is uh, because Nash doesn't have any uh, messages yet, we're going to go to contacts. And then Nash is gonna oh, Nash is gonna send a message to Sasha, and um, now you can see that a channel was created for them. This is just fake data that we did in the previous video, or fake message data, and uh, the channel is now created. So um, technically, now if we go back to the previous screen, and we go back to messages, you can see that there we go. Uh, Sasha's channel is there, but there are no messages, as you can see, like. Uh, there's no message indication at the bottom here. And if we click this, nothing is happening because we disabled that navigation. So if we go to our home screen, oh, sorry, we do not want to go to the home screen. We want to go to the messages page. And um, at the top here where we have our inkwell over here, we want to navigate to the chat screen. And now the route is going to be the root of channel, and then we just pass in the channel. And this should work now. So clicking this, it takes us to uh, the messaging channel. Okay, and then now for, before we jump into showing messages and sending messages, uh, one thing we might want to do is um, make this button so that you can also select a user to create a new messaging channel. So this is in the home screen, and uh, at the bottom in the navigation bar, here we have it. So this glowing action button, we want to be able to show a pop-up to select a user. And I'm just gonna paste this in. What we're doing is we're calling show dialogue, which is a Flutter method. 
and uh, we get a builder of the context, then we show a flutter dialogue, aspect ratio, just so that it's sized uh, properly, and then the uh, child will be the context page. So exactly what is currently here, we will show it when we uh, tap this plus. So if we tap this now, cool, we can also uh, select a user from uh, this list of pop-ups over here. In the future, we may change this to make it a little bit <laughs> better. Uh, it's, it's very basic for now. Uh, but yeah, um, at, at least it works. Okay, so now we want to be able to actually send messages and uh, get to the, the best parts of this tutorial. So let's go to the messages page. Oh, sorry, now let's go to the chat screen. And for the app bar, we still want to show the title. And this is the first thing that we will do is show like a little bit of an indication of like when the user was last online. So um, in the app bar title, we no longer need the message data. We will now actually need the channel. But we don't actually need to do this. We don't need to hard code it in. We can actually just uh, get it from uh, our context as well. So instead of passing it in, let's uh, do final channel and then we can say stream channel dot of context dot channel. Okay, and then channel dot image. So again, this won't work channel.image because we don't have the channel's image necessarily set. We may want to show the image of the user. So instead we're gonna go helpers.getChannelImage pass in the current user. And then for this to work, we need that extension. Let's jump back. And this will not be null. Okay, for now, I'm just gonna make this hard-coded and uh, let's see what the issue is. Okay, we're no longer passing in anything. This can be constant. Okay, and uh, again, let's select Nash. Let's go to Sasha. Okay, so now you can see that we get uh, Sasha's profile picture and we get dot, dot, dot. And that's because we still need to give the name of the user. And it's showing dot, dot, dot because we are doing the ellipsis thing uh, for the text overflow. Okay, so instead of this, we will say helpers dot get channel name and then pass in this again. Okay, and now we got the image and we got the name. And at the moment, um, it's always saying that Sasha is online. Let's make this reactive. So we're gonna remove this and I'm just gonna paste uh, the following in and then uh, explain to you exactly what is happening. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, create this connection status uh, builder. This is something that I took directly from the stream chat flutter package as the stream chat flutter package is fully featured chats uh, out of the box. So. If you want to build something custom like this, then uh, looking for inspiration in that package is a good idea. As an example here, I'm just taking this because it worked out well and it was exactly what I needed um, for this purposes. And uh, we'll get into this in a moment. So we have this and we also need the build connected title state. So at the bottom, we're just gonna paste that in and uh, we would also need the channel. So just gonna say final channel. Okay, and for first where or null to work, we would need to import the collection package. So at the top, I'm just gonna import this. Uh, we no longer need models. So this is importing a collection from Dart and we're showing the show iterable extension. And uh, what that allows us to do is to use first where on null on a list of stuff. So the first item or if it's null, I uh, will talk about this in a moment. Let's just get everything working first. And then the last class that we need to create is this typing indicator. Sorry, I know we're creating a lot and it would, might be easier for you to just uh, copy this from the final source code. 
as opposed to typing it yourself. So now you can see we have last online four days ago. So that's the last time that the SciShow was online. And uh, it will also do typing indications for us, which uh, later on uh, we'll demo and you'll see it's really cool. Uh, okay, so in the app title, let's go from the top. We have a beta stream builder and this beta stream builder takes in the member stream. So the members of the channel and the initial data is equal to state.members. Then we get a builder and then we use this custom connection status builder widget, which uh, all it does is it returns a status builder that gives us a context and the status. So the status of the user, like if it's he's currently online or not. Okay, uh, so this, this connection status is for us as a user. So if we go to this as a widget, as I said, I copied this from the stream chat flutter package. What we're doing here is um, we are getting the connection uh, status stream, which can be passed in. If it's not passed in, then we get the stream chat core of client WS connection status stream. And then uh, we're taking the client from stream chat core, and then we're doing beta stream builder. And we're taking a look at the initial data connection status. Stream is the stream that we're getting here. And the no data builder, we're building a loading indicator, loading builder. And error builder, we are returning the error builder with the context. And again, these are things that we can pass in. And this is just because I copied it from uh, the uh, stream chat flutter package. And then finally, we get a, a builder that's the status builder. Okay, so that's all we care about. You can take a look in greater detail if you want. And if we take a look at that builder, this is what we're getting. Here we're getting a status, so a connection status. If the connection status is, is connected, then we show the build connected tile, uh, title state, which is this one over here. If it is connecting, we show connecting. If it is this uh, disconnected, then we show offline. Okay, so then it would show that, hey, we're currently offline or hey, we're currently connecting. But um, for our purposes, we should always be connected. So then in the build connected title state, uh, this is where it, get, it gets a little bit more interesting. We get the current channel from uh, our inherited widget, and then we get the member count. Just as a clarification, this stream channel is what we, sorry, excuse me. This stream channel is what we define at the very top here for our root with channel where we give the stream channel channel. Okay, so we're getting the members count, channel that members count, and we're checking to see if it's uh, not equal to null and the member count is greater than two, then we show that there are like X number of members. But again, for our purposes, we are only creating channels that have two members in them. But these are just extra checks that you can do. Um, these watches are um, pretty cool as well. You can look to see who's watching a channel. Again, I copied this from the stream chat uh, Flutter package. So that's why there's extra functionality that we don't really need. And then, uh, yeah, user ID, stream chat core, we're getting the current user um, of the, uh, that's currently authenticated and we're getting their ID. Uh, here we could have used the extension method as well. And then we're getting all of the other members that are not, uh, not us. So we're doing uh, filtering on all of the members, first where or null, and making sure that the current uh, user ID is not equal to our user ID. So all of the other members, and if the other members is not equal to null, then we check to see if the other members are online. So the uh, first user of the other member. Um, oh yeah, sorry, not it's, it's only getting one member. And um, checking to see if uh, they're online. If that is, then we show the online status. If they're not online, it shows the last online. Then we just format it with Jiffy to show uh, the last active state. And then the last thing is, if none of that's true, then we return a typing indicator. And what to note here is that for this, we are not returning anything. We are setting a widget called alternative widget. And alternative widget is defined at the top here. So this is just an alternative widget that will be displayed if the typing indicator is not being displayed. 
So we're passing in the alternative widget to the typing indicator. And the typing indicator is, uh, again, a widget I stole from the Flutterstream package. And this typing indicator um, would get the channel state. And then we, uh, I'm just gonna make this a size box. We get the alternative widget. If the alternate widget is not null, uh, then, or if it is null, then we just push in a size box. Okay, and then for this beta stream builder, we are looking at the channel states, which is channel.state. And we're looking at the typing event, which is, uh, we get the keys. And uh, this is of iterable user. So this is the initial data. And we are doing a stream with the typing event stream. And then we're just mapping the stream to get the typings. And uh, same thing here, we're just getting the key. So this E is map entry and we're just getting the user, okay? Uh, you can take a look at this in your own time, but same principle, we're just taking a stream, getting the events and uh, getting the typing events. And now we get the data, which is uh, of type user. So the reason that we're getting a user is because we might want to show which user is doing the typing events. But as we only have one user, uh, it's always gonna be the same person. But yeah, if the data is not null, so if data is not empty equals to true, then we show that uh, there's a, a text typing message. So someone is typing a message. Uh, alternatively, we show the uh, alt widget, as you can see over there. And the alt widget will just show last online in this instance or online. And now with this code, we should be able to see when Sasha is typing, but we still need to do some extra stuff to actually indicate that a user is typing. So. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit and uh, later on we'll do a final demo and show that everything is working. What we'd like to do now is actually start showing actual messages and then be able to send a message to the channel. So uh, let's get started with that. So at the moment all we have is this demo message list which is the information that you can see here. We're going to replace this with a real one and uh, to do that we would actually first need to get real data. So instead of returning this demo message list what we're going to do now is return this message list core. And this can no longer be a constant, so let's just remove that. And import our error message that we want to show. And here we are gonna return a message list instead of the demo message list. So we'll create that now. But the message list core is similar to the other lists that we've seen with stream uh, or stream chats. This one just gets the list of messages and that's gonna be dependent on the channel that's above of it. So because we have this stream channel over here, uh, the message list core would know, oh, okay, get all the messages for that uh, channel. So perfect. Um, we can now remove the demo message list. We no longer need that. And instead bring in the actual message list that we will need. So adding that. Okay, and then the action bar can be constant. The action bar is at the bottom here, and we'll get to that in a moment. Now what we're doing is we are passing in the list of messages that we are getting from the message list core, this one over here, passing it into this message list, and then we're doing a list view separated. And this is where we're doing some uh, kind of complex logic to a degree just to determine where we can display our labels and stuff. So let's actually get this thing working and then uh, I'll go through the code uh, exactly as, as we need to. First thing that we need to do is in the message tile, we are no longer passing in fake data. So we no longer need message uh, data in this, like this. We will actually just pass in the actual message that we get uh, from stream. So this will be final message message. The message tile here is this uh, this message tile. So what someone else sends you, and then required this dot message uh, message, and then at the bottom instead of uh, doing this, we're gonna say message dot text, and we'll just uh, say that this won't be null. And the ah, I guess if we want to be safe, we can just say empty message and message date we're going to say message uh, dot 
created at to local and uh, there we go so let's just do two string on that um, for now uh, we'll we'll fix this in a moment and then need to do the exact same thing for message own tile instead of saying no message let's uh, just make it empty that makes more sense message dot created at to local and for now we'll just do to string we'll fix it in a bit and remove this empty message okay and then uh, for this date label uh, we'll need to modify this slightly as well so this is now going to be a date time and uh, we will call it date time and um, as you can see currently we did this is this label over here this yesterday that we have um, we're going to create this or convert this to a stateful widget and I'm just going to copy in the information that we need so we're creating a late string called day info and then in the init state we are taking a look at when this was created so what we're doing now is we're using the jiffy package to get the date time so this is just jiffy and uh, then we're doing some logic to see what, what the actual label should be. So if the day info is, for example, or if the cre created ad is the same day as now, then we show today. If it is created at the same as uh, yesterday, then so we subtract one day, then we show yesterday. And then is after seven days, we show units day. Is after units one year, we um, show like a year. And uh, otherwise, we just uh, show the be formatted to a certain uh, extent, so showing month and day. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can look into this more and look more into the Jeffy package if you want to. But now we'll just display this over there, the day info. And we should not have any errors, I believe. Uh, this should work. Let's just double check. Okay, we don't have problems. And I think uh, let's just restart the uh, application. Select Nash, select Sasha. Okay, and cool, as we would expect, there are no messages uh, currently. And as a result, we aren't seeing anything. So to fix that, let's actually then send something. Let's uh, go to the uh, message input box here and then we can actually send some info. So if we scroll up, it is, uh, this action bar over here so let's go there so this is actually a little bit that's going to change i'm just going to copy paste the new values and then we can explore what's different so if we go to source control and go to chat screen and uh, if we take a look at the bottom so take a look at the action bar what we have now is we have a stateful widget we are creating a text editing controller and we're disposing that controller and dispose and this all stays the same the only difference is is that the text field now gets the controller we give some extra padding and we added an exp uh, we removed the constant and we put the, the constant here and removed it there and in the on change for the text ed editing controller this is important we are calling stream channel of context.channel.keystroke. So what we're saying is that for this uh, current channel, we are uh, sending a key stroke event. So that means that if you start typing over here, um, which is currently not working because we probably need to do a hot restart. If we start typing over here, then it would send like a notification to the channel saying that, hey, uh, Nash is currently typing in this channel as an example. It will tell you which member is typing. And then finally, on submitted, we call send message. And then if we tap the glowing action button, uh, we also call send message. So send message is a future async. And uh, we're making sure that the controller's text is not empty. And if it's not empty, then we call send message on the channel. And uh, we pass in a message and the message just gets the text from the controller. And then finally we call controllers.clear and that's it. So now, hopefully, let's do a hot restart. 
login as Nash, send Sasha a message. Uh, we'll say hello world. Send the message. And there we go. We got it. So we got our message going through. And um, even more important, we got that typing in uh, notifications that would tell Sasha that, hey, Nash is currently typing. And uh, we'll demo this in a moment. As you can see, we still have that timestamp uh, thing that I mentioned. So let's um, go back to our file and just search to string. So we want to remove this or we want to format this uh, slightly better. So I'm going to remove this and we're going to create a new Jiffy instance. And for this Jiffy, we will format it to be JM. And uh, then we'll do the exact same above. And now you can see it shows you the uh, hour and the minutes and it shows you AM, PM. Uh, so now we can see that the message is sent. So now if we send another one, uh, let's test the time. Maybe a smiley face. Let's test the time. Now you can see 108 p.m. Okay, fantastic. And uh, that is currently my time over here, as you can see, 108 p.m. Okay, I would like to do a hard coded demo now so that we can actually uh, see everything working. But there's one more thing that we need to do before we can do that. And that is to get the number of unread messages and uh, to highlight like this text if there's a new message. So if we go back to the messages page, let's just go here, okay, messages page. We are gonna search for this one. So just to see where it is in our code base. Okay, so it's this one over here and we want to replace this. So I'm gonna remove all of this for now. And uh, instead we're gonna do center and unread by the child will be unread indicator. And this one I mostly copied from the stream chat Flutter package as well. And uh, we'll need to create this widget. So in the widgets, I'm just gonna create a new file and I'm gonna uh, create the unread indicator file. And then add it here. So export unread indicator. And while we're doing this, I'm also gonna export the display error. I know we've already imported it a couple of places, but just for consistency. And then the unread ind indicator, I'm just gonna paste it in and then tell you what's happening. So as you can see, nothing is showing now because we don't have an unread message. But um, what we're doing is we are doing, using beta stream builder, we're getting the uh, unread count stream from our channel state. And we're getting the initial data, which is the unread count. And uh, then in the builder, we're getting the data, which is an int showing like the number of unread messages. And if it's a zero, then we just show a size box and we can make this shrink. So just show nothing. And material, if there is something. So this material will then be app color secondary. We give um, a border radius for um, the shape and then we have some padding and then we have different variations of what to show. So if it's more than 99, we just show 99 plus. If there's less than 99, we just show the data and then we show the fonts and the color of the fonts. Okay, that was a, a mouthful. So we should see a typing indicator in, or oh, a number of messages that are unread if there were any. But before we do that and before we do a full demo, we also need to make this text blue if there is an unread message. So going back to the messages uh, page, if we go to the build last message, we currently have this beta stream builder that gets the last message, but we also need a way to determine if one of those messages are unread. And to do that, we are gonna wrap it in another builder. So another beta stream builder and let's just remove that. Get the builder context data, pass that in. Okay. And this beta stream builder will be a child of the 
or will be within the others builder and we'll return that and here the stream is going to be the channel dot state dot unread count stream and the initial data will be channel dot state uh, dot unread counts and if it is zero we'll just say that it's initially zero uh, like if this is null then we'll say it's zero now what we're going to do is we are going to show different text depending on whether the unread counts is null or not so let's call this uh, count and the builder will be an int so now you can see that our count is an int as well and finally i'm just going to copy it in for our style we will say if the counts is bigger than zero, then show the secondary color. If the counts is not bigger than zero, then show text faded color. And now if we send a message, we should see uh, it working. So as an example, let's um, go and send Sasha a message. Testing colors or testing uh, indicator. No, testing unread. <laughs> okay, send the message go back and now we'll sign in as Sasha and beautiful uh, Nash has sent us three messages that we haven't read and you can see it's marked as blue uh, the last message okay so if we open this now great we, uh, we we can see the messages the problem now is that if we go back it's still saying that it's not uh, it's still unread um, so what's up there that is because we need uh, to tell the stream API that, hey, we have read this. So we need to mark these as read. So um, to do that, we're gonna go to the chat screen. So this screen over here. And at the very top, we're gonna convert this to a stateful widget. Please note that there's probably many ways that you can do this uh, thing that we're about to do, but for my purposes, this was the easiest way to do it. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to create init state. Let's remove that. And then we're going to say stream channel dot of context dot channel dot state and get the unread count stream and call dot listen on it. And this gets the integer value. So we'll create a new function. Uh, we'll call it a future void or we'll return the future void we'll call it unread count handler and this will get the count this will be asynchronous and we'll pass it in over here instead so fantastic then what we'll do is we'll do a check to see if the count is bigger than zero then uh, we will await the stream channel of context and get the channel and we will call mark red so we'll call mark red on all of the uh, channel information or all of the messages on that channel and uh, last but not least we will need to dispose of this listener we need to put it here so we're going to say late and this is a stream subscription of int and we'll call it unread count uh, subscription. And set this equal to that and then override dispose. There we go. And call unread count subscription dot cancel. So now once we open this page, it would immediately get the current subscription count. So like listen to the changes and immediately if there is anything call mark red so if the counts is bigger than zero and while you're chatting as well if someone sends you a message uh, this would immediately update the handler would be called and then it would notify the stream api hey this channel's messages has been read so fantastic uh, if we restart now log in as sasha you can see testing unread that's because we haven't done a hot restart so now if we click it uh, this mark read function should have been triggered and beautiful it's no longer listed uh, listed as unread 
And yeah, I do believe that is all we had to do. So now is actually uh, the moments of truth. We can actually just test and make sure that it works and that it's, um, and that it's reactive so that we can see information as it's occurring. So I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna push this to my physical device and then log in as one user and message another user in real time. So to push to an actual device, we're just gonna run Flutter Run and it's gonna be a profile build and let's go. Okay, it is installed and running on my device. So I'm just gonna record the screen and Actually, uh, what we want to do is now also push it to the emulator. And for the emulator, this can just be a debug build. Okay, um, for <laughs> full testing purposes, I think we'll go and use a new account. So from here, we'll select Sahil. Okay, so Sahil has, hasn't messaged anyone. Um, from my account, I'm gonna use uh, Devon, so on my phone. Uh, Devin has messaged uh, one person. He's messaged me. Um, okay, and then in contacts, well, of course, let's say here, we're gonna message Devin. And uh, let's say, how's it going? Okay, and as you can see, it also created, uh, or immediately created Sahil's profile, um, like, on uh, the list of channels on the physical device. So now if we send a message, immediately it, it comes through. How's it going? We got 100. And now uh, you can also see that uh, if we tap this, it says that Sahil is online, Devon is online. We got a message. And if we go back, uh, the message is no longer read. And now if we send Devon a reply, we should see typing. It's going well. And yeah, fantastic. It's uh, typing as well. So we have <laughs> semi exactly what we wanted. One thing that I did forget to do was to uh, close the text window uh, that comes up. So that's, that's a small change that uh, I'll do uh, after this video. Uh, later on, we might explore how we can incorporate stories. Um, you could do that with chat uh, most likely it would be better to do it with a stream feed but yeah we'll explore that potentially in a future video but yeah there's still a lot that we can do for example uh, we can incorporate notifications uh, we can incorporate local storage uh, so persistent uh, storage that's on the device we can um, create mentions we can upload attachments so images and uh, audio files and uh, GPS coordinates, all of that. And we have examples for all of that in the um, chat SDK documentation. Uh, we can create search, which we're currently not doing. Um, we can create more advanced profile management. Uh, we can create authentication on a server. Uh, there's still tons of work that we can do with this uh, particular application. So uh, please let us know what you'd like to see and what you would need help with uh, when it comes to incorporating a chat app into your own custom application. As I mentioned, the code would be on GitHub. So if you want the latest code, just check out the main branch or check out the branch for this particular video uh, tutorial and uh, the latest code will be there. There might be some small changes as I tweak a couple of things, uh, maybe remove some unnecessary code. For example, uh, the models, uh, some of these models we no longer need. Uh, for example, the uh, message data as an example. So yeah, there will be some small changes in the final code than what you just saw in this video. So yeah, thank you for sticking around and uh, watching this video. Please feel free to comment down below what you need help with, if anything, what you liked about the video, what you didn't like, and uh, let us know what you'd like to see in future videos. And until then, uh, goodbye.